Earth sure looks like a perfect world. Earth sure looks like a perfect world. This is exactly what Polaris Dawn Commander Jared Isaacman said as he emerged from a Dragon spacecraft and looked back at the planet. It can be said that the first commercial spacewalk in the Polaris Dawn program conducted by SpaceX and billionaire Jared Isaacman is one of the boldest attempts yet to push the boundaries of privately funded spaceflight. More remarkably, this is something that even a large national agency like NASA had never imagined before. So what makes this historic mission so special? Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. First commercial spacewalk. Despite efforts by some national agencies to stop SpaceX from its dream of Mars colonization, SpaceX is still soaring ahead strongly. The spectacle that Polaris's commander, Jared Isaacman, and SpaceX engineer Sarah Gillis pulled open the hatch and floated outside has become one of the greatest epics in the history of spaceflight. Since that moment, history has marked an internet entrepreneur and a SpaceX engineer as the first private astronauts to walk in space. And since then, the boundaries of human achievement in space have been pushed to a new level. But don't forget our other two heroes. They are Scott Poteet, a former Air Force pilot who works for Isaacman, and SpaceX engineer Anna Menon, who remained inside the capsule to support Isaacman and Gillis. Because the capsule had no air inside, they too were technically spacewalking, making this the largest number of astronauts to ever spacewalk simultaneously. Congratulations, SpaceX Dragon Team, Rukas Ackman, and the crew of Polaris program. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk couldn't hide his emotions. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson also doesn't forget to send his congratulations for this victory. Congratulations, Polaris Program and SpaceX, on the first commercial spacewalk in history. Today's success represents a giant leap forward for the commercial space industry and NASA's long-term goal to build a vibrant U.S. space economy. Of course, the greatness doesn't stop there. This event marked the first use of SpaceX's newly developed EVA extravehicular activity, suits, designed for private space missions. The spacewalk began in the early hours and was part of a broader mission to test technologies for future space exploration, including potential missions to the Moon and Mars. The crew reached an orbit higher than any human spaceflight since Apollo 17 returned from the Moon in 1972. Furthermore, it's safe to say that although the whole world witnessed the first ever spacewalk 59 years ago, SpaceX's spacewalk in this century still affirms its terrible attraction. It has been proven clearly by the number of 5.1 million live viewers on X, not to mention the significant interest and awe expressed across various platforms. So why is that? The answer is very simple. The dream of Mars colonization is no longer Musk's alone, but is shared by millions of people around the world. It also shows that the support for Musk and SpaceX is growing, overwhelming the elements that are hindering Musk's journey to conquer his dream. And one day in the distant future, I am sure that such events will no longer be something so surprising. And Eric Berger, senior space editor at Ars Technica, shared the same idea. When the Falcon 9 first launched in 2010, the same could be said. We've been launching into space forever, blah blah. But here's the difference. 14 years later, SpaceX is launching 100 plus times a year, something no government has ever done. One can imagine, 14 years from now, dozens of people launching on Starship and taking a similar EVA in space, then on the Moon, and eventually Mars. That's why this is not overblown. This is potentially a critical step on humanity's expansion into the solar system. Until now, the conquest of space is inherently always fraught with danger. These risks arise from the space environment itself and the conditions astronauts face during missions. Since 1961, fewer than 700 individuals have ventured into space, and tragically, around 30 astronauts and cosmonauts have lost their lives during training or space missions. Fast forward to 2024, the challenge in space will increase multiple times for Polaris when it orbits through portions of the Van Allen radiation belt which is rich in energetic charged particles, primarily electrons and protons. The high levels of radiation associated with very energetic particles mean the Van Allen belts pose a potential hazard to spacecraft and their crew. You'll often hear spaceflight naysayers suggest that venturing beyond Earth is impossible because of the barrier formed by the Van Allen belts, but this has been disproven. The Apollo 8 mission became the first crewed spaceship to fly 
through them and beyond in 1968 when astronauts Jim Lovell, William Anders, and Frank Borman orbited the moon and safely returned to Earth. And with the first EVA in such an environment, Polaris Dawn became one of the most anticipated missions in the history of space travel. Polaris Dawn serves a pivotal role for SpaceX in the commercial space sector, akin to the function of NASA's Project Gemini during the 1960s space race to the moon. Both initiatives are designed to test and develop essential technologies and operational capabilities necessary for future missions beyond Earth. Gemini's objective was the development of space travel techniques to support the Apollo mission to land astronauts on the moon. The mission included the first U.S. spacewalk, made by Ed White in June 1965, three months after Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov had become the first human to walk in space. Similarly, Polaris Dawn aims to demonstrate new operational capabilities, including the first-ever commercial spacewalk. This mission will utilize SpaceX's newly developed extravehicular activity suits, which are crucial for future deep space missions. Project Gemini involved a series of crewed missions that provided NASA with valuable experience in spaceflight operations, which were critical for the success of Apollo. Like Gemini, Polaris Dawn is part of a three-mission program that seeks to build experience and refine techniques for future commercial missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond enhancing human spaceflight capabilities. Polaris Dawn is set to reach altitudes higher than any human has flown since Apollo 17, mirroring how Gemini missions extended the operational envelope of human spaceflight. This altitude will allow for the study of radiation effects and other scientific experiments, further contributing to the understanding of human health in space. Furthermore, both programs serve as stepping stones for larger goals. Project Gemini laid the groundwork for the Apollo lunar landings, while Polaris Dawn is expected to lead to more ambitious missions, including potential crewed flights on SpaceX's Starship. Last but not least, any ambitious mission requires careful preparation. Gemini was conducted after the first American crewed space program, Project Mercury, so NASA developed the Gemini spacecraft, which was larger than Mercury, weighing 8,490 pounds compared to Mercury's 3,000 pounds. The Gemini missions required a larger launch vehicle, the 109-foot Titan II rocket with a first stage thrust of 430,000 pounds, which launched from Cape Kennedy Air Force Station. In terms of infrastructure, NASA's Mission Control Center at Cape Kennedy underwent extensive modifications for Gemini, almost doubling its capacities with four new consoles for a total of 10 flight controller stations in the operations control room. For Polaris Dawn, because the mission's focus is spacewalk, so SpaceX has spent years developing its spacesuit dedicated for this mission. Evolved from the intravehicular activity, IVA suit, the EVA suit provides greater mobility, a state-of-the-art helmet heads-up display, HUD, and camera, new thermal management textiles, and materials borrowed from Falcon's inner stage and Dragon's trunk. The EVA suits are night and day from the original IVA suits. They contain more than a dozen layers of MLI, redundancy on seals, vents, valves, new visor, lots of rotators and joints, CHUD, camera. They are very rigid when pressurized, as are all EVA suits. We have rotator joints and stitching throughout the suit for mobility, and the primary purpose of the EVA operation is to gather data on suit performance. It is definitely not a suit for Mars, but at least the journey has begun to make it that way, Isaac Mann tweeted. Besides that, the Dragon spacecraft was modified to meet the mission requirements. There were upgrades to the life support system to increase the amount of oxygen that can be fed to the suit. The ship's environmental sensing suite was also upgraded to properly monitor the crew during their journey. SpaceX has also added a new nitrogen repressurization system that will repressurize the Dragon following the spacewalk. SpaceX depressurized and repressurized Crew Dragon on Earth to test its systems and remove chemicals before the mission. Another upgrade is on the forward module, called the Skywalker. It serves as a handhold and foothold for the crew during their space foray. Additional handhelds have been added on the hatch for interior operations, with a new motor on the forward hatch added as well. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.